Hello, I am the Dapper Man, and this is going to be my review, and my biased review of the movie Streets of Fire. Now, Streets of Fire is a movie that I was actually let borrow from a friend of mine and co-worker, Tim, at my job, so, or my other job. So, when you watch this video, you know, I'm doing this for you, man. And here it is on DVD. He told me about how much he liked this, and I wasn't really sure because I like some things that Walter Hill has done. I guess my favorite is like most other people's favorite, The Warriors. And I very much love it. It was one of those movies that I've heard about all the time. Not this one, The Warriors. Heard about so much. I've seen posters, a video game on PS3 and an Xbox, t shirts, toys, everything. Just everything I could see about it. And this was about like, I would say, seven to eight years ago. Now, unfortunately, this movie did not do that well in the box office. It only made half of what was spent in that movie. I guess some of the downfall was that people just didn't know what to take of it. It's just something that was not done before. And I don't know what other film you would say that could describe it, other than watching Heavy Metal. Now, the first time when I watched this movie, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was that good. Not something I would typically watch. But there was something intriguing about it. And I believe... What was intriguing about it is that it reminded me so much of 80s, but it had a 50s style. And that's what this movie does. It, I mean, it tells you right in the very beginning, at another time, another place, a rock and roll fable. And it begins into this concert. I didn't know how many great actors and actresses were into this movie. This movie has the kickstart starting with Bill Paxton, and it had Robert Townsend, which I was like, oh my goodness the roles are very short but i had him inside along with that michael parade now i can tell you i've never seen a movie with michael parade this is probably the very first film and i can confidently say that because i looked through the list through imdb so if you know what international movie database is dot com you can see every movie he's done and i looked through the entire list and i've never seen any of those movies and yes i have never seen eddie and the cruisers oh well but before I get too much ahead of myself, it was a long list. Rick Moranis is a villain. or well, not really a villain. He's just not really a nice guy. Not a person that you want to enjoy. He was my least favorite character in this movie. I just thought it was okay. And every time he said something, it was just like, you got this very short man who's trying to demand and give orders to people who are just all around him rugged and tough and it just never matched up with me or at least amongst everyone else it just a role I thought was very misplaced due to the case of it seeming misplaced it probably had something to do about how none of the actors or actresses liked him on set he was so used to do improvisation he couldn't improvise in this movie and when you hire someone who always does improvising into a film it makes no sense to do that and say oh you can't improvise a single scene that's like Having a comedian on board in a movie, you say, oh, you can't crack a single joke. On the set here, Rick Moranis didn't make anybody laugh. He just nagged and just was extremely irritated and didn't want to work around anyone. So I can understand why his role did not fit that well into this movie. Along with others, we have a very young 18-year-old Diane Lane. This must be her first or second film. And when I saw her, I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe how young she looks in this movie. This every movie I've seen of her now. She's 50, 60. At least when I started seeing her in movies, it was in her mid to late 40s, which wasn't very many movies, but still. It was one of those faces you really recognize. Willem Dafoe. Oh my goodness. I have, I've, this has to be his very first role because there are certain things he said. I caught on and it's like, that's the Willem Dafoe I know. Oh, when he laughed and he had a certain crackle to it. I was like, that's the Willem Dafoe laugh. Looks like I finally ran into someone that likes to play as rough as I do. Yeah, this must be a lucky night. But every time I kept looking, I was like, I can't believe this is him. He had to be 20 or 21 in this movie. I didn't look up his birthday, so I don't really know. But to see him so young and not have his face completely sunk in, <laughs> it really threw me back. And I was really shocked to see so many actors and actresses in this film. Amy Madigan, one who I've seen like one or two other movies in, she fits this role perfect. Now her role originally was for 
a masculine tough guy but they couldn't find a guy that could actually fit so somehow he, Walter Hill was convinced to have her on did a take and he loved it kept her inside and you know what it works it works for her and I'm so glad he did because it makes so much more sense of having her around beating up other guys it's just fun to watch along with things that's fun to watch is watching explosions oh my goodness who ever thought that one bullet shot could just make the most biggest explosion you've ever seen on a bike it is ridiculous you see bikes explode you see windows explode you see cars explode you see buses explode <laughs> You see so many things with so much explosions, it will probably make Michael Bay just eye goggle and just, I don't know. He probably got a lot of inspiration from this movie. You know, that's a thing right there. Another thing I enjoyed was the lyrics that was done for this movie. Now, the lyrics I'm talking about is the rock and roll music. It was done by Stevie Nicks, Tom Petty, and also by Ry Cooper. Now, if you don't know who Ry Cooper is, you definitely need to listen to him because he is a great rock and roll legend. Also, it's, I guess the reason why this film may seem a bit violent for people for its PG rating because it originally was supposed to be an R rating, but he decided to clip some scenes back because he was afraid that the audience would never accept it, which they still didn't, and he still took a loss for it. But he was still able to put it together and make it a cult film, which it is today. Now, the scenes that were cut off was the scenes of of a woman showing her bare breasts and it was um i guess an impalement with a knife along with some of the language because they he took down some language now this movie does have some heavy bit of language for a pg rated film along with the, the violence you got to think this movie was made in 1984 so the rating system was a lot different then case in point gremlins so there were some things that took in its place that would never take today you can see some comic book movies actually copying this type of style and art which I believe they should do a little bit more because the over exaggerating of the facial expressions the way they talk to each other and some of the dialogue is so cheesy but it's so bad and it's so much fun to watch I just personally enjoy it I'm going to hopefully find it on blu-ray but I've purchased so many blu-rays and have so many movies that I got on sale great deals I think I need to put a hold right now before I buy any more but it's something that will be put on my radar if I ever do come across a very good sale to see it. Because I just don't feel like spending $30 for it. Maybe Shout Factory would actually give me a copy and I can review that copy for them. But it's been out for a while so I don't see that happening anytime soon. But if you're watching this video and if you want to give me a gift, that's a gift. That's a gift idea. You should do it. Anyhow, I know this wasn't very much of a review, but this is me talking about the movie. Now, if you want to know what the story is, I don't want to spoil it for you. You're just going to have to watch it. I know it sounds very cheap of me, but I'm just going to say you have to watch it. You want to see just the toughest, meanest guys just punch each other's face and never get a blister, but just non-stop punching. It reminds me very much like a comic book movie with a Western style. You have to see it. It's something to behold. It's something you have to see to believe because... At the end, I was wanting more. Maybe they'll do a reboot. That time is already coming past, so I'm very fine and I'm happy with the way the film is right now. So, if I was to say, it's a great cult movie, something you may want to own if you like cult movies, and something that must be watched. If you want to know why it's rated PG, here's the reason why it's rated PG. And just let so you know, this it leans a bit more in PG-13, not R. And not PG, but in that middle ground. Thank you for watching my video. And hopefully I'll see you around to the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. And comment below. Let me know what your thoughts of the video. And if you have seen this movie, please let me know. I want to hear your thoughts on this movie. Because I never heard of this movie. Ever. And I don't know how this got under my radar. But there is still loads of movies I haven't heard of yet. So, until then, take care. God bless. Cheers.